Right, let's go to the hotel. Oh, they look like a cherry bunch, don't they? Excuse me. Yeah. Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. Fair enough, but I'm Do you ever meet a guy called Plantow? No, <laughs> I ain't. You missed your chance. If you're quick, you'll catch him at the coroner's. Okay, Have you seen a guy this. dressed as a clown? No, I ain't. Don't tell me I missed him. Oh, that's too bad. I love the clowns, don't you? I've seen daytime television that was funnier. I love it when the little guys get hurt. That figures. Custard vice. Hose pipe down a pants, then smack! A plank in the kisser. So the thug likes when people get hurt. Okay. Let's show him the picture. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? Is this a trick question? No. I simply asked if you recognized him. Okay then. No, I don't. Okay. See you later. Not if you see me first. Fair enough. Let's talk to him then. Excuse me? Yeah? Well, he looks slimy. Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and I told you, I don't know him. Okay. Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No. That name means nothing to me. Is he Italian in a French program, a French game? I'm looking for a clown. Are you trying to be funny? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. Hush. What about this? Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No. I never saw it. I don't believe him. Okay, let's go inside. Oh, he was in the photo. In the newspaper. Excuse me. Didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. So much for that, don't worry. Do you know a guy called Plantau? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. They <laughs> are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good Marks to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. String and egg cartoons. Okay, let's try the picture. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Oh. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. Okay, tell What's me What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's oh. a killer? Of course. Amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. Oh, I cannot spy. jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. Fair enough. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Right, let's talk to the pianist. Concentrated Hi so there, hard on that word. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one <laughs> foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Oh, well, she's Aren't a character. Aren't you going to tell me your name? Uh, George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? 
I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans. But don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Was she, was she coming on to me? Right, let's do this properly. And also, pointing out the fact that her hair is the same colour as her outfit. I thought it was a hat she was wearing. Right, let's talk about... Are you first. here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algie's funeral. I didn't realise you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not, he was my husband. Uh, harsh man. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. The world romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cock over arm. Not She's at all rather what I was naughty. expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. Oh, what happened last night? What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbart. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. It was just <laughs> as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight. Romantic music tinkling across the room. And then, a stranger's glance. Oh my God. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. Uh -oh, he was the man I'd him. been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Oh, okay. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. Merlin. Okay, let's talk about the guys outside. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket. I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. Definitely that doesn't naughty. necessarily make them gangsters. Fair enough. I'm looking for a murderer. Good heavens! You're a private detective. That's correct, ma'am. What's the term you Americans use? It's on the tip of my tongue. I believe what you're thinking of is dick. Precisely. That's always what she's thinking of, a bit. Have you come across a man who calls himself Khan? I am familiar with only one person named Khan. Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol barbarian chieftain? No, darling. Kevin. Kevin Khan? I never heard of him. I'd be most surprised if you had, darling. He's a pharmacist in Hemel Hempstead. <laughs> Organizes fundraising for the Rotarian. Lovely man. Does he have a scar on his cheek? I really wouldn't know, sweetie. You know him, you can't realize he's got a big scar on his cheek. Okay, let's show the picture. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? Yep, that's English. You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. Oh, hen. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman. A man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. Fair enough. Let's talk about it. When did you last see Merlin? <coughs> it was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk, Chappie. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling. Positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously what was, something what was in the of briefcase? great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. 
I'll bet they had something to do with Plantar's briefcase. No, I just said that. Let's talk to him again. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. Right, let's try again. Can't talk to him. Can we talk to him again? Hello again. No. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. That was brief. Can I go upstairs? I can. The door was locked. Imagine that. If the tailor's description was correct, this was the killer's room. The right. sign on Somebody's the door read there. 22. The door was locked. Handy. So we need a key. Let's have a word. Very unlikely I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? Okay. Do you have a guest by the name of Khan? No, monsieur. Perhaps you would care to check the register. That would be great, yeah. The man who calls himself Khan has a scar on his right cheek. Raymond? I tell you, I do not know a man named Khan. Maybe not, but I noticed a change in his expression when I mentioned the scar. Did you? Sure, Petra. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. But you said he wasn't. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. It's Merlin, isn't it? Alias Khan, the clown. I told you, I cannot tell you that. Fair enough. Do you know a man named Plantow? No, monsieur. That was kind of a long shot. Let's try I'm the clown. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Uh, I would say you're much of a clown. I'd like safe. to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation, Scar. I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my Scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. There was no one registered under the name of Khan, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. Okay, let's see if we can get... What now, monsieur? Oh, calm down. I believe Khan, the man with the scar, is also known as Merlin, the man who has taken room 22. What of it? What do you want? Access to his room. Do you have a license, monsieur? Huh? A private investigator's license? Well, not exactly, but I can explain everything. I am sorry, but without credentials, I cannot help. Why not? I insist you give me the key to Merlin's room. I cannot do that, monsieur. This guy Merlin is a menace. So you say, monsieur. He's not only a danger to society, but to your guests as well. He has toyed with the affections of Lady Piermont. <gasps> Are there no depths to which he will not sink. Precisely. Okay, let's go and talk to Lady Paramount. Maybe she can get a key for us. Because this isn't working. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? Did I show you this photo? Yes, darling. Right, okay, we don't need the photograph. Can I take the key? That would be awesome. Excuse him. What? You are trying to steal that key? No. No way. <laughs> Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. 
Okay. What now, monsieur? I want the key. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. Then I want to buy it. No, I want to I'd like it. to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Which one? Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. <laughs> Funny guy. He's already killed once, twice, maybe as many as three times. With your help, I just might be able to stop him. But what if he finds out I have helped you? No, I cannot do it. Okay. Let's go and talk to Lady Piermont now. Maybe she can request a room change. She seems as if she can get her own way sometimes. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? The key. Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? Oh, no. It's the key to an empty room. And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scout follow? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Hey, now, tell me, steady on. Why do you want to get into that room? It's next to the room the killer is using. Ah, so you plan to eavesdrop on Merlin? Yes. I was hoping there might be a connecting door. Or well, that. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case. But a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. Yeah, it never helps. Never hinders, I think, so what's... I see! You there! Flunky! We, oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewellery for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Right, take it through. Let me grab it. Where is that walk? Over to you, my dear. Grab the key. Grab the key. Let's go. Right, so this is the one I've got the key for. The door was locked. Well, take the key out and use the key. Now maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. I think common sense would be able to tell you the actor could use the right key. Empty? There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague, lingering smell of Camphor. Camphor. What else can I look at? The cabinet was empty, but it smelt of onions. No kidding, it really did. Onions. Who's going to keep onions in the cabinet? Why not? Oh, that's not nerve wracking at all. Good job he left his window open. Here we go. The bed was freshly made. And the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. Damn. Hmm. Briefcase. It was the battered leather briefcase I'd seen Plantar carrying just before he died. I searched the interior of the briefcase, but as I'd half expected, it was empty. Let's have a look over here. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. 
That would have been handy, wouldn't it? Let's try the wardrobe. Why didn't you look in? The closet was a solid, impressive piece of antique furniture. Okay. No, stop closing it. I'm having a problem here. The closet was a solid imp The closet was a solid impressive piece of antique furniture. Okay. The closet Okay. So what about in the closet? I'll screw it. It was Khan. I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. What the heck's that? Oh, they were in the closet. As Khan opened the wardrobe, I was sure I was dead. But he grabbed his pants quickly and didn't even see me. Don't look. I didn't usually spy on men getting changed. But this guy was a killer, and I didn't want any surprises. He left his checkered pants on the bed. Hard to recognize now. A strip along the side seam of the pants had been unpicked, then sewn back up with strong thread and a special stitch. I had that kind of feeling you only get from searching still warm pants. There was nothing in the pocket. Ugh. I flipped the pants over. I found an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. But as I pulled it from the pocket, a strong thread came with it. A thread with a metal tag on the end. I found nothing in the pocket. Okay, flip it back over. I pulled on the metal tag and the thread came out of the pants. It was like pulling out a rip cord. Flip it back over. I turned the pants over again. Uh -huh. I searched the pocket gingerly and found a pass card. It read Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. The pocket was empty. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here. Do we bother going out here? Okay, fair enough. Can I use the card? What now, monsieur? Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Me. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. A murderer? Are you sure? Positive. I've changed his tone rather quickly there. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No, monsieur. Let's not give him the key. See what he says. Hello again. Do you recognize this key? No, I do not. Handy. What about this? Does the name on this matchbook mean anything to you? Indeed it does. For Alamut was the home of the old man of the mountains. You do not know him? No, I don't. Who was he? Do you recognize this card? No, I do not. He's a man of many words. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? Right, let's have a look at this. I found this matchbook in Merlin's bedroom. It came from the club Alamut. It might be useful to find out if that club is in Paris, George. 
That's a good idea. This is the key to room 21. That's next to the room taken by that rotten Merlin, isn't it? Yes, yes. and it's vacant. Really? How convenient. Maybe it was my imagination, but I had an uncomfortable feeling about this situation. Uh, yeah. Moving on. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So, that deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. Okay, okay. Um, I suppose I better return the key. What if I just say I found it? Think you'll buy it? What now, monsieur? Do you recognize this key? That is the property of the Hotel Ubu. Correct. May I ask how it found its way from the little hook to your pocket? Would you believe it was put there by a poltergeist? No, monsieur. The hotel is regularly serviced by an exorcist. Oh, if we had a ghost, Father Fécond would have flushed it out. I suppose you want the key back. Not especialement. The room is vacant. Since you are so determined to conduct your little investigation, I won't stop you. But I've already checked it. Did I show you this pass? We oui, monsieur. Okay. Fair enough. I wonder if I could use the phone, that would be handy. Right, let's go. Nothing else is happening here. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem. If you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh. Your security? Well, all right. Search him, Flat. You bet! Hey, knock it off! Get off, you big ape! Nothing, Guido! Zilch! Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flat. Hmm. There's nothing in here. Okay. Get lost, creep. Oh yeah? And what if I don't? What if I call the cops? First, I break your arms at the elbows and wrists. Then, when you recover consciousness, I break your fingers. There's just one flaw in your plans, Ape Man. What's that? It's broad daylight. I don't think even you would assault me on a busy street. Of course, this tranquil square at the end of a cul-de-sac. This isolated corner of Paris that hasn't seen a street sweeper's brush since VE Day. This would be just about perfect for a mugging. Pardon me. I'm about to get very lost. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Shorty, I didn't think much of your trick, little man. I don't know what you're looking for, but you picked on the wrong guy. Maybe you'll spread the word around the sewers. George Stobart is on the case. That's Stobart. Two B's and two T's. It sounded impressive to me, but the weasel didn't seem to share my enthusiasm. Still, I figured you'd think twice before gunning me down in the street in cold blood. I do not like your tone. Oh yeah? And what are you going to do about it? If you do not go away, I will gun you down in cold blood, right here in the street, without thinking twice about it. Fair enough. Okay. What now then? I want in with the case. The safe. What now, monsieur? I've just been manhandled by a gorilla. Yes? I do not see any signs of a gorilla. No, not a real gorilla. It was a guy who looked like a gorilla. It happened right out front of this building. 
Let me get this quite clear. Are you complaining or bragging? I want to know what you're going to do about it. The scrawny one has a gun. I suggest you contact the police. Can't you do anything about them? What goes on in the streets of Paris is hardly my responsibility. But it's outside your hotel. Aren't you concerned that your guests are being intimidated by gangsters? No one else has complained, monsieur. Did they steal anything from you? Well, no. They didn't find what they were looking for. What was that? I don't know. I don't think they did either. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He oh was dear. secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, well. What do you make of this tool? <gasps> Stunning, monsieur. I bet you handle it like a professional. I'm not sure how to feel about that sentence. Right, I don't know where to go, where to go now. Hello again. This is a photo of Khan, right? Yes. That is just one of the names by which he is known. May I shake you by the hand? I do not shake the hands of imperialist dogs. Oh. Now that's a real bad attitude problem you've got there. Okay. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. I want to use a telephone. I also want to get into the safe. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? That gangster I told you about? He went through my pockets just now. Good heavens! One never knows what to expect in foreign parts. Thank you for the warning, young man. I shall hide my credit cards in my underwear. Well, thanks for that image. Did I show you this photograph? Yes, darling. Okay. Let's go somewhere else. Hold it right there. Search him again, Black. The fort for? Nothing, Guido. Okay. Let him go. Okay. Have we got anything here? The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words Club Alamut. Okay. It was the card I'd found in the hotel bedroom. It read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read, Hotel Ubu. Okay. There doesn't seem to be anything to do down here. I can't seem to leave this area yet, so there must be still something to do. Let's go back up to Kanjum. That was handy. There was nothing else in the pockets of the killer's pants. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. Well, we know that. The cabinet had no drawers, just a single door. It feels like this isn't necessary. But let's go back this way anyway. Right, any ideas where we should go next? Because I'm kind of lost for thoughts.
Because we've searched in here. The cabinet was empty, but it's... Again. So if this happens every time I come Not out, I'm assuming Gio. they're looking okay. for something. Let him go. I can't seem to get out of here. The man looked like an amiable Bigfoot. The guy looked just like a weasel. What's this? Oh, you can get hints. Let's see what this does. You need the help of a certain lady once more. Hi, ma'am. It's not cheap. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? I wonder what it was. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he of wouldn't course. buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Follow me, George. Colin. I'm terrified. Did you place the package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madam. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed, he did. But what's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. <laughs> but that is against the law. I have to be a detail. justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. I don't have a gun. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Don't suggest any but awards. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. Hang on, I bet these guys frisked me for it. It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plant. Right, hang on. To save getting frisked outside. <coughs> I know, you missed that the first time, didn't you? It's absolutely hilarious. And that woman just keeps on coming on to me. Right, let's drop this. Down there. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript. But I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. So this is obviously what they're searching me for. So I'll throw it down there and then I'll go and collect it. Once they've searched me and I've got nothing. That explains everything. It right there. Search him again. <laughs> a wee bit gift. <laughs> Nothing, Guido. Okay. Let him go. Yep. We're gonna go down the alley. There it is. If the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after, they were gonna be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. 